Hello, this is Way of Weinstein. Wherever you may be and however you may be watching, Facebook Live, YouTube. No, we're not in the financial district of New York City. We're actually in beautiful Santa Monica, Los Angeles. And this evening we have a very, very special guest, my fraternity brother from Ohio University, the only other New Yorker in AEPI at, at OU. He's... He's here graciously let me stay with him for the past five days. Mr. David Feld, come on to Way of Weinstein. Hey, can I get a seat? Can I get yes, a seat? Yes, take the seat. Take the thank seat. You, thank you. So, take the seat. So first off, welcome. Welcome to Way of thank Weinstein. You. Thank you. Uh, but yeah. Can uh, I have the four? Yes, the four is yours. Tell me what your thoughts on tonight's well, episode. I'm going to tell you my thoughts on the weekend. It was great having Jake Weinstein here. It was a great, um, what was it? Four. Got here Wednesday. Uh, it was it's a good like, like five, four, four five days, days, five nights. It was a great, great say. Always good seeing a fraternity brother. Um, we'll start early in the day when the Jets came up with a great victory. Watch some good football together. But then we'll go to Curb. And I'm going to hate. Mm -hmm. Not a good episode. I laughed maybe once or twice. Um, not enough Jeff. And not enough Funkhauser. I was laughing at Jeff at the beginning. I thought there was going to be, you know, multiple occurrences of him. Just, nope, one scene of him. Funkhauser, not enough of him. Um, right now, I'm disappointed with the new season, to be quite frank. And I'm the biggest Curb, you know, Seinfeld enthusiast, just like him. But it's it's been a disappointing two episodes, to say the least. Um, those are my two cents. Um, I like the whole idea that the whole fatwa is, you know, occurring in every episode, but it's just, it's just not doing it for me. Uh, I'm not laughing. That, those are my two cents. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to him now. All right. Well, good, bad, and different. Um, definitely some, definitely some, I think there is, there is some truth that I do disagree, but there is some. A lot of truth that Jeff could have been utilized more, and Susie was nowhere to be seen this episode. And it's not for this episode. I'll get into it later, but I feel like they were trying to grab things from the past and and implement it. So let's start from the beginning. So starts with Larry in the hotel writing the letter to the Ayatollah. Leon and Jeff come in. I guess life in order. They'll be fine, which. Again, like how David said, that could have been better instrumented, but then you need to like move the story along. And then he runs into the prostitute, which I believe she was on a show with uh, with David Spade and Putty from from Seinfeld. I forget I forget the name of the show. It was some kind of show on on CBS. So it's, she's a prostitute, very very skimpy boots, uh, cleavage, and Larry saying you should. Be more classy. You'll get a bunch of more clientele. Get one dress at set at Saks, and then you'll add a whole closet in them. It's just funny how Larry occasionally just is is right. The show was called Just Shoot Me. That was the one on CBS. Was it? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, th thanks, David. So for so for there, after he runs into the prostitute. And he talks to the front desk receptionist. He says his name, has his fake name is Buck Dancer. And it's Jim Rash, who you may know as the Dean from Community. He also won an Oscar for the George Clooney movie, The Descendants. So very talented. Always great to see talent added to, to Curb. And then he's saying that they have a pastry chef which makes pastries. And then the pastries seem to be from Pepperidge Farm. And he makes a big... Makes a big stink like all Larry always does. Uses, unless you have to use the tongue. The tongue isn't meant for cookies. And then for for that, like Larry doesn't want want to use the tongue. It's a whole thing to do. Ugh. And then so Larry and Leon are are at the house. Larry saying that he needs to get a bodyguard, and then Leon says he'll take care of it. Okay. Based on how Leon totally effed up in the previous episode as his receptionist slash so assistant by not giving him the message to not do the the Ayatollah impression on Kimmel, why would you give Leon more responsibility? Now, I get it. It was for the humeric purpose 
of the show. But Larry's smarter than that. I mean, I mean, for that, I could see where, where my friend David was... What was upset was upset with uh, the thing is not that funny. I, I get that. Nah, that that could have been that could have been improved. And Ted comes over to see how he's see how he's doing, but really he wants permission to date Cheryl. And then Larry's very very upset. He calls Mary. Uh, Mary's like eh, and says he's not a physical type. Which later later in the episode you literally see. Her with someone that probably on set is is Larry's like probably stand in, which is hilarious. Seeing that, but she was probably just making something up, or or just for the humor of just saying how she and David looks exactly like him. <laughs> and then and from there, Funkhauser comes with his nephew, who's a star pitcher, straight A's, runs six clubs. If he nails his SATs, he'll get a full baseball scholarship to pitch at Stanford. Then you know something's bad. Anyway, as soon as they say that they want want the sandwiches, they fight over the pickle jar, and they're all fighting over it. And then when Larry and Funk's nephew are fighting over it, he breaks a bone in his pitching arm. And then from there, you see like they have it actually a half open jar in the fridge. Then from there he goes to Alaba's chicken, which okay. So when I said how they were reaching back from other laurels, so the Palestinian chicken episode from a couple seasons ago, that was an that was an all time top five episode. That's in the conversation of my favorite Kurt episode. I feel like they were kind of drawing back and trying to take from that excellence, trying to infuse that into tonight, which. Was it fun? Was it nice to see Shara, Shara and Alabas checking again? Yeah, and the conversation of how how our involvement is that she's plotted before. That was that was that was nice, but at the same time, it was kind of stuck on it. And seeing them have have sex and seeing how just screaming out Donald Trump, Kushner, like Pence, Steve Bannon. That was funny. That that, that, I, that I was laughing. That I thought was funny. And then the bodyguard co comes in, which that bodyguard was an idiot. I mean, really, he doesn't know the difference between that and someone attacking him. Again, that's what happened when you really lean on in charge. <sighs> and then from, and then from that, Larry needs to go back to the hotel, left his pajamas. And then, and from there, he he takes the cookies again, again with the, with the no tongs, which I get it. But Larry, come on! I mean, personally, you know, would be better is if they just had all the cookies laid out, and this way, not like less cookies per plate. This way, there'd be less chances of you touching more than one cookie. That would that would be great for that. So he gets essentially banned from the hotel. So you come again, I'll, I'll have you arrested. And then, not only in, in addition to Larry's bodyguard being incompetent, he's, he's saying like, "Oh, I, I need uh, better towels. I need the, I need, I can't have like something with the with the fruit. Larry can't have a specific fruit." And and then essentially. That which I don't get from that, and then Funk is and back to Funkhauser. Funk is saying that how his nephew is angry, lost his will, doesn't get, doesn't care about anything. And he's just screaming at at the woman who's bringing him food. It's because he can't jerk off. He has no attention. That he can't he can't switch hit. And from and from that, Larry has Larry's the great idea of talking, going to the prostitute, and arranging friends to the prostitute just to get some release. So, in order to do this, now when Larry and Leon were outside, one nitpick about this episode was that, granted I get Leon's incompetent with most things, but if Larry were to tell Leon what she looks like, and, and Larry just stays outside, that probably would have just worked better, or just run into Leon running with someone else and, and arranging for someone else to come, 
or getting arrested for hiring a prostitute. They could have gone that angle, but the angle that they did go, Larry, Larry Caesar, turns out the advice worked. She's wearing a very classy dress. She sets up the meeting, and that, like the pickle draw that worked as a distraction. Larry sees Ted and, and Cheryl, and then from that, I almost feel like this whole storyline is just to give Cheryl, I mean, a whole reason to be on the show. Uh, other other than that, I mean, that, there's no there's no other reason to have Cheryl on the show. Not to say that I didn't like Cheryl's character. I, I do like Cheryl's character, but don't force her into the show. And the fact that he essentially Larry just lost it and and decided to just wanted to be the pickle jar hero, and from there a bodyguard, the bodyguard and security comes and takes him out. Now. And the final couple things, so so Larry has the meeting, the prostitute meets with the nephew, says just relax, and then Larry's in the Skype call at the consulate, who it turns out is a huge Seinfeld fan, the puffy shirt, uh, that's his favorite episode, and they're talking, and he's got some tongs for cookies, and I ran and invented the tongs, and, and again, the bodyguard comes in again, through having to the sounds of having sex and because he sees the prostitute wearing her, wearing her bra and panties the the bodyguard are running around and then Leon and the kid the consulate is very upset closes his laptop and looks like Larry is Larry is screwed again so so o overall I, li I like the episode I, la I laughed a couple of times I mean are there some things that I discussed that could have been done better sure now, now, again, um, I, I apologize for this being late uh, because we were watching the Yankees game and it's the, and it's the Indians, which, hey, they actually won a game. Very nice. And we're watching the rest of, of Sunday Night Football. But yeah, if you're watching this, thank you for the support. If not, just watch, watch it tomorrow morning, Facebook Live, YouTube. What did you think of the episode? Let me know if there, there is something that that you'd like me to do a quick video on if you have any request. Again, I'll be back in New York late tomorrow night, so we should be back in the financial district. Hopefully, if everything goes according to plan. It's been an absolute pleasure being here in, San in Santa Monica and exploring Los Angeles. If you're friends with me on Facebook, you can see everything that I've done. Thanks again to David Jake and Charlie for letting me stay with you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And yeah, that is all. Good night, good morning, wherever you are, and bye.